to the Vulcan Developer Day here in Montreal. Uh, first off, excuse my French. Uh, this is, uh, for your sake, I will be speaking entirely in English. Uh, it is not pleasant after my nine years learning. Um, so my name is Alon Orbach. I work for Samsung. I'm just going to take us through uh, an introduction uh, for the day, um, what's happening, why we are all here, and then go through a brief recap of what's new in Vulcan 1.1 that we won't be covering throughout the session. So, first off, uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, I will not list all the thank yous, there'll be more thank yous as the day progresses, uh, but a special thanks to um, all the speakers, uh, to you guys for coming along, uh, to everyone, uh, the staff that put it together, and especially to Ubisoft for hosting us here today, and for Montreal International for all the work they did promoting us. Um, so, uh, do, do tweet away. Uh, um, Vulcan API is our Twitter account for Vulcan. Um, the, the hashtag for the day is Vulcan Dev Day. And three of us have volunteered our Twitter accounts for you to spam with your issues uh, today and beyond. Uh, um, beware, there's also pictures of cats and all kinds of other fantastic things on those. Um, the slides and videos, so the day is being recorded. Um, the slides and videos will be up very soon on that URL. So if you want to take a photo of a slide, that's the one you should take a photo of. And there is a survey. Please fill that out after the day ends. Um, we do really value th this. So um, we're still um, imp trying to improve how we do um, DevRel and Kronos. We really value your feedback. How did you think the sessions went? What should we have done better? So the purpose for the day, this kind of people ask me, why are we doing this? What is this to get feedback? Is this to learn? So it's a mixture of both. Um, so firstly, we are um, here to provide guidance, uh, both on the latest things that have um, latest developments in Vulkan, new features in One One, and also the more challenging aspects of the API uh, um, and how we can um, basically provide the knowledge from those who designed it, um, those in the driver teams, to you guys. Uh, secondly, we really want your questions. We really value understanding how you use the API, where things fall short um, in, uh, in the guidance. Please don't be shy. Um, any question is valuable to us, even if it um, seems obvious to you. And we really want your input. So uh, the Vulcan Working Group, which I'll explain in a moment, uh, really is driven by developer requirements. And we want to know what are the things that we could do in the API as we move forwards um, in shaping it. We really do. <laughs> so not joking, we, we do actually listen to it and we have lots of arguments about it uh, and interpret your feedback, so it's really valuable. So an overview of the day. I'm Alon doing the intro. We have Bill next going straight into a hot topic of render passes. We know how much Everyone loves render passes, and Bill will guide us through them. Um, and then Jordan will go through Vulcan memory management uh, as uh, our morning session. Um, Mark is going to explain about the Vulcan assistant layer and the layer factory, so all, all things layers. Now we've always, as, as, as ever, had last minute changes, and we've just tweaked the agenda slightly. So we're going to have Marcus discuss um, Vulcan HPP just before lunch and shift lunch a bit earlier. Then Daniel is going to cover the new functionality in 1.1 uh, Vulcan subgroup, um, followed by two brief presentations about uh, interesting projects going on, in, um, in fact, here in Montreal from Google. Um, Angle, which is the OpenGL layer above, um, be, OpenGL implemented on top of Vulcan, and the Swift shader reference implementation and fallback, um, uh, so uh, the CPU re reference implementation. In the afternoon, um, we have the shader tool chain, what's going on with HLSL in Vulkan. Uh, then uh, descriptor indexing, which is a uh, new hot of the press uh, topic from GDC, and Hai is going to walk us through that. And as ever, over the weekend, a new presentation appeared. We thought, hey, we, there's not, we've not been saying enough about descriptor update templates, so Marcus is going to cover that as our last session of the day. Then we're going to have a panel discussion, which is basically where any questions that you haven't asked during the day, that's your chance. And you'll see uh, a glimpse into the internal arguing we have with um, panelists uh, responding to your questions. So that's going to be very much driven by your input. 
And then um, the recording gets turned off at five, the beer comes out, and you can ask the other questions. Uh, so that's it. That's the plan for the day. Let's see how much we keep to schedule or not. So who designs Vulcan? Uh, the Vulcan Working Group is us. So first, can I just... Vulcan Working Group members or those from member companies, can you just wave? They're mainly there hiding from the developers. Uh, <laughs> but there's also some back there. So we're basically made up of uh, all the bits and pieces of the industry, from um, GPU vendors, platform vendors like myself, SOC integrators, uh, tool developers, o um, OEMs, uh, game engine developers, and more. And this is us. Uh, well, this is at least a glimpse of us. Uh, we always look this happy, uh, at, uh, especially uh, after five days of meetings. Uh, um, but we're, we are basically the industry. Um, and uh, membership of Kronos is open to any company. If you are interested in joining, do talk to one of us here today uh, if, you're, if you'd like to get more involved in that level. So Vulcan is an open standard. Um, we are both cross-vendor and cross-platform. Uh, both of those create uh, challenges, but we believe the benefits of doing so are significant. And uh, don't hesitate to... Um, express your views on this through the day and we will explain why we think it works as well as some of the, the difficulties it uh, arises from it. Um, so Vulcan is available across all platforms um, uh, in one way or another. So on Windows, on Linux, on Android, um, it's a um, first-class API, drivers available, used directly. Nintendo Switch is a conformant product with Vulkan, um, but um, you need to talk to your lovely Switch people uh, uh, about how to access it. Um, and then one of the recent developments is the portability initiative that was announced um, back in February, which is a, a set of tools uh, that have been open sourced, ma mainly led by Valve doing the work uh, um, for m to enable Vulkan on Mac OS and iOS. It's not a conformant product, but it does give you the ability to target the vast majority of Vulkan features on Apple platforms. And that's the link to find out more about that. Uh, we are really driven by input from developers, as I mentioned. Uh, so we have direct um, members as well as from our dev tech teams getting your input, making sure that's what we do. But there's also other ways that Kronos and the Vulcan Working Group is trying to directly get your input, so not just via um, uh, dev tech teams, which sometimes skew things slightly. I, I talk from experience. Uh, but also we have um, uh, more and more stuff on GitHub. There'll be a list in a second of what, what that entails. But we really do value engagement on there. And the new thing that we've created called the Vulcan Ecosystem Forum, which uh, meets, in, it's a public meeting, um, public call on, on a regular basis, primarily to try and get cooperation between all the different tools projects in, in Vulcan, so growing the ecosystem. And if you do want to get more involved, especially in setting the future direction of Vulcan, do make sure you come talk to us about other opportunities that um, are, exist. So, uh, Vulcan is now two years old. There are um, titles shipping, uh, including Vulcan-only title, uh, Wolfenstein 2. Uh, it is becoming uh, a more and more reliable API. We know that there are issues, with, um, and, and we hope that kind of two years in, um, more and more of those have been resolved, but I'm sure we'll hear from you about those today. And it's um, cross-platform. So we have quite a few uh, mobile games out using Vulkan. Um, I won't list them all. Um, that's kind of my day job in my team, uh, making Vulkan on mobile successful. So what's new in Vulkan 1.1? So uh, there's... Uh, Vulcan 1.1 was primarily wrapping up a bunch of extensions that we developed across the year, but there, there's a couple of new, brand new bits of functionality in them. One of them is subgroup, which I mentioned Daniel will talk about later, um, being able to uh, enable parallel sh shader invocations. Um, that, that's a key feature that developers uh, pushed for and we, we believe we delivered. Uh, HL, HLSL support is growing in importance. Uh, which uh, Lay will be talking about, but not about relaxed block precision. But that's uh, a key feature we've added in Wonder One. And then device group, in terms of being able to target multiple GPUs 
on a system. Uh, KHR device group is now a core feature in Vulkan 1.1, uh, allowing you to do that in a transparent, semi-transparent way. Uh, one of the key things in, in Vulkan 1.1 is a bunch of things we call the cross-process um, uh, slash external memory, external sync extensions. Uh, and they provide, uh, there's various motivations for them. VR compositors was one of the big reasons, uh, but also being able to uh, import and export between Vulkan and GL or, or, or D3D was one of the key. This is the, the mechanism we used for that, which was um, pushed through in, in, in 1.1. Uh, um, we've really um, moving ahead with advanced compute functionality. Uh, so being able to uh, uh, write, uh, read and write 16, bit uh, um, quantities in GPU memory, one of the key features we've exposed. Uh, and then the other um, area in terms of VR being pushing, pushing ahead is multi-view. So multi-view being able to uh, avoid having redundant geometry where, uh, where possible, uh, having stereo pairs, cube map faces uh, is now a core feature in Vulkan 1.1. Uh, I mentioned a script update template earlier. Um, uh, so this was an extension back from last year, um, I think um, GDC 2017, and has now become a core feature in 1.1, which Marcus will talk about. Um, now comes the exciting bits. So these are the, the, the platform integrator bits. Um, we won't discuss these today. Uh, we've done a, a lot of work to get uh, YUV support in Vulkan. Uh, so this is for both um, uh, uh, video being streamed in, uh, camera being imported into surface textures, uh, and then protected content, uh, which if you are interested in protected content, Bill, Bill is your guy over there, uh, being able to get DRM content into Vulkan. Uh, but um, we understand, uh, um, and we will kind of do a, a specific talk on these for the platform integrators that are interested. And then the, the joy of, of fixing the things we got wrong in 1.0. So you will see maintenance comes out, and we have this KHR maintenance one, two. There may be a three. I, I won't, I won't, I won't um, break NDA for that. But we, we do understand we get some things wrong, and we will fix them. So it is shipping today um, across different devices. So um, there's many uh, conformant implementations. And then on mobile, Android P developer preview has it uh, already. And what I mentioned in terms of different things that we want feedback on, the specifications are out, the conformance tests are out, uh, the tools, uh, the tool chains are out, and we really want input on those. So sometimes it's difficult, and it's one of the things we're trying to address, like writing a conformance test when you're trying to ship a title. So if you're in crunch mode, we understand that may not be your top priority, but we really value, kind of, if you've hit a driver bug, and you kind of tell us about it, make sure that we are covering them in the conformance tests. So that's me, and now I'm going to hand over to Bill to talk you through render passes. <laughs>